All right, today we are in instruction book, page 64. And our problem says, Liana has five cups of oats. She needs two cups of oats for one full batch of oatmeal muffins. Can she use all of her oats by making multiple full batches of muffins? We can figure out the answer by drawing a picture. So you can use a model of cups to see if it would work. So in this measuring cup, you can see there are two cups in each measuring cup. And she has five cups of oats. So one, two, three, four, plus one more is five. And the question is asking, can she use all of her oats by making more than one batch of muffins? So she needs two cups to make one batch. So here we have one batch. Here we have two batches, but can she make a third batch? And the answer is no, because there wouldn't be enough oats. So can she use all of her oats? The, no, the answer is no. And we can see here that if she tries to use them all, she won't have enough. So she's gonna have one cup left over. We could also model it by using a number line to help us understand the problem. So the number line shows multiples of two circled. So we're counting by twos, two, four, six, eight, ten. 10. Um, you can see that multiples of two are all even numbers. So can she use five cups of oats? The answer would be no. So let's go ahead and answer our problems. Why does the model use measuring cups that hold two cups of oats? So why did they choose not to do one cup measuring cups or three cup measuring cups? Hmm, why did they use two? Oh, because she needed two cups of oats for one batch. So the two cups represents one batch. Two cups is one batch of muffins. How can you tell from the measuring cup model that Liana can't use all five of five cups of oats in two cup batches? So I can tell that she can't use them all because there is one cup left over. There is only one cup left. And one cup is not enough to make another batch. Number four says, what do the circled numbers on the number line represent? So remember two, four, six, eight, ten, we're counting by twos. What in the problem says two? She needs two cups of oats. So every two cups represents one batch of muffins. How can you tell from the number line that five is not a multiple of two? Well, how can we tell that five is not a multiple? It's not circled. How many cups of oats would Liana use in three batches of muffins? So if she were to make one, two, three batches of muffins, how many cups of oats would she need? How many would she use? Two, four, Six. Six cups. Number seven, explain how you can find out whether a number such as five is a multiple of two. Explain how you can find out whether a number such as five is a multiple of two. 
So how would we figure out multiples of two? One way is you can skip count by twos. Remember, if you need to pause the video so you can write, that is perfectly fine. We're going to move on to the triads, and we're not going to use a separate piece of paper today. We're just going to answer them in the book. If you need room to write out your problems, you can do it over here. So, there are four bottles of water in a pack. Patrick needs 20 bottles of water for his soccer team. Can he buy exactly 20 bottles in packs of four? So essentially, this question is asking us, is 20 a multiple of four? So we can skip count by fours and see if we hit 20. So if we do that, I'm just gonna write it off to the side here. It's kind of like making a number line, except we're just gonna skip count by fours. Four, eight, 12, 24, 24, 20. So if we skip count by fours, yes, we do get 20. So can he buy exactly 20 bottles in a pack? We're gonna say yes. Also, if you didn't know to skip count by fours and you wanted to draw a picture, we could have made packs of four. So if we have packs of four, these represent our four bottles. Let's see how many times we can do that. Let's see if we can hit 20. I like how I'm doing it right underneath this too, so you guys can see as we count how much faster skip counting is. So we have to become um, familiar with skip counting and that help will help you with your multiplication facts too. So four, eight, 12, I'm still drawing my packs of water, 16 and 20. So if you need to draw a picture, draw a picture to figure out that question. Number nine says, what are the first five multiples of the number nine? So we're going to skip count by nines. The first five. So we're gonna start with nine and then we're gonna skip count. So nine plus nine is 18. 18 plus 9 is 27. We have three multiples. We need two more. So counting by nines again, so we can do 27. Use your fingers. They're good manipulatives for you to use. 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36. And our last one is going to be 45. So those are our first five multiples. One, two, three, four, five. All right, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next two pages. And we're gonna complete page 66 and 67 together as well. Alfred is arranging 40 model cars into rows and he wants to put the same number of cars in each row. Find all the ways he can arrange the cars. So they did one way for us. They want us to find all the ways. Alfred did one way for us. One, two, three, four, five. So he has five columns and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight rows. Eight and five are a factor pair of 40. Alfred could also arrange the cars in five rows of eight. So let's see here, model it. Okay, so we just don't, we don't have a picture of cars, we're representing it by boxes, which would be a lot easier if we were trying to solve this problem, because I can't draw 40 little cars, and I don't think we have the time for that either. <laughs> so, two more ways Alfred can arrange the cars 
our 10 rows of four. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. One, two, three, four, or two rows of 20. And that means that we have more factor pairs. 10 and four are a factor pair, and two and 20 are another factor pair. So Alfred could arrange the cars in two rows of, 20 rows of two. All right, number 10. What are two more ways to arrange the cars into even rows? Whew. All right, guys, we're gonna have to find, we're gonna have to find two more ways. We can't do what they've already done. They've already done eight and five, 10 and four, and two and 20. So, I mean, the easiest one that we could do would be, let's see, because is this still in the picture? Yeah, wanted to make sure you guys could see it. If we did one row of 40 cars, one really long parking lot, <laughs> And we did 40 boxes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100, 101, 102, 103, 104, 105, 106, 107, 108, 109, 110, 111, 112, 113, 114, 115, 116, 117, 118, 119, 120, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100, 101, 102, 103, 104, 105, 106, 107, 108, 109, 110, 111, 112, 113, 114, 115, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, comma 40, okay, so one row of 40, which would make our pack factor pair one and four. And let's see, it wants us to do another way. Hmm, 40, we've already done eight and five and 10 and two. So let's look at our examples. They say 10 and four, this means they could also arrange the cars in, in four rows of 10. So they're switching it around every time. So I believe what they, what else that they say we could do is we could do um, 40 rows of one, which would be a parking lot that looks like this. Ugh, all the way down. And we would do 40, okay? So what are two more ways to arrange the cars in the even rows? We could do one row of 40 or 40 rows of one, okay? So either way, remember when we multiply, um, that commutative property tells us that we can do one times 40 and get 40, or we could do 40 times one and get 40. And you guys are really good about knowing that. So I think you'll understand that we could do these are our two ways. Uh, list all the factor pairs of 40. So factor pairs, pairs like shoes means that we need more than one. So pairs are doubles. So we found one in 40 and the example gave us five and eight. And this example gave us four and 10 and also gave us two and 20. So there are all of our factor pairs that we found and they gave us. Each number in a factor pair is a factor. How many factors does 40 have? So each number is a factor and the question's ask, asking us how many factors it has. Not how many factor pairs, how many factors. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Bonus question. How many factor pairs are there? One, two, three, four. Okay, so hopefully you can see the difference with that. Number 13, why might it be helpful to always start with the number one and work up when finding factors? Hmm. You might have heard me as I was going through and I said one 
and then I looked down here and they already had a two and then three. I know three is not evenly put into factors um, for 40. So I skipped three, four, they did four, five, six does not go into 40 evenly, seven does not, eight does not, oh wait, eight does right there. And then when I get to nine, so you could hear me like saying all the different ways that we could do this. Going through the numbers one and up will help you not miss one. Okay, so starting with one helps, helps keep you organized, helps you not miss a factor. And that's why it's so important to know your multiplication facts too. Okay. Number 14, explain how to use arrays or area models to find factor pairs. So arrays, you've learned that with multiplication. You've been working with arrays this year and last year. Or area models. So these are area models. Explain how using those can help you find factor pairs. So um, we would have even rows and columns in correct factor pairs. So for example, if we tried to put these cars into rows of three and we tried to do 40, we would do, we would have our one, two, three, and then we would try to see how many we could create with 40. So how many rows would we have? Three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30, 33, I hope you can see this through the paper, <laughs> 33, 36, 30, 39, 40. So we would have one extra car that did not fit in the straight line, okay? So we had one extra. That's how we know that we can't have a multiple of three, okay? Or we can't have a factor with three. Um, we're gonna try this in the book not on a separate piece of paper today. Number 15, Brad is playing with blocks. He has 18 blocks and wants to make an array with the same number of blocks in each row. What are all the different ways he could arrange the blocks? So he has 18. Man, we might need an extra piece of paper for this. Okay. So he has 18 blocks and wants to make an array with the same number of blocks in each row. So he doesn't want to have one extra one that doesn't fit. What are all the different ways he can arrange the blocks? So we're definitely going to need a piece of paper for this. So number 15, we have 18. Well, the first one, remember, is the easiest because we can do one. So one by 18. One, two, three. Okay, so 1, 18. There's our first factor pair, our first combination that we could do. Could we do 2? If we try 2, 
we're going to say that 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. So yes, we can do two rows. And then we, that means how many would we have in our columns? Two rows of 2 times what gives me 18? 2 times 9 gives me 18. So I want 9 here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Let me recount that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Two rows of 9 is going to give us 18. So, so far we have two different ways that he can make his, he could put his blocks. Now, what about 3? If I count by 3s, let's see if that'll work. 3, 6, 9. I'm trying to get 18. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. And that's 6. So I know that I'll have three rows and six in each row. So here's my three rows. And one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Always in double counting to make sure I did that correctly. Three and six are also factor pairs. Now four, what's the easiest way to see if four will work? Well, let's count by fours. Four, eight, 12, 16, 20. Now I'm gonna stop there because my number was 18 and 18 falls in between 16 and 20 and I did not hit 18. So that tells me that I cannot have four rows or else I'm gonna have something left over. And I'm gonna show you just so you can see. If I did four rows and then I tried to make my equal four rows, one, two, three, four. Let's see, when I counted, I was between four and five. So one, two, three, four, five. So here's a car, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 blocks. I said cars, blocks is all he has. So it would look something like that. And that is, that is not the same number of blocks in each row like he wanted. So we know that there's no number that goes with four to make 18. Let's try five. 5, 10, 15, 20. Uh-oh, 18 comes between 15 and 20, so that one's not going to work either. Now, my next number, I get to 6, but I don't have to do anything because why? I already figured out that 6 is factor paired with 3 to equal 18. So if I started the other way, what would be my answer? 6 rows of 3, and we've already done the work for that. So... Um, what are the different ways he could arrange the blocks? So I drew them here. I'm just going to write my answer in here. He could do one row with 18 in each row. He could do two rows with nine in each row, or he could do three rows with six in each row. And that's it for number 15. Number 16, what are the factors of the number 27? factors of 27. So let's go through them one at a time. We know one will work. All right, for our last question, number 16, we are going to find the factors for the number 27. So we're going to go through them one at a time and see what numbers work. So we know that one will work every time. So one will be a factor and 27 will be a factor. Next, we're going to count by twos and see if we hit 27. So if we count by twos, we know that it's always gonna end in an even number. Seven is not an even number, so two is not gonna be a factor. Two will not work. So now we'll count by threes. <clears throat> so we have three, six, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 
24, 27. So three is a factor of 27. And how many times did we count to get to three? We counted nine times. Now we can go to four and count by fours and see if we hit 27. Four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28. So we did not hit 27, so that's not a factor. What about fives? We know that fives end in a five or a zero, not a seven, so fives will not work. Let's try six. Six, 12, 18, 24, 30. So 30 did not, 30 did not hit 27, so six does not work. And we can try seven. So seven, 14, 21, 28, we already missed 27, so seven's not a factor. All right, we're gonna try eight. Eight, 16, 24, 32. So we, eight does not work either. Our next number is nine, and if we look, we already found out that nine was a factor. So the factors for 27 are one, three, nine, and 27.